Hi. You've waited for it, and it's here. The fifth installation of a very well-received series. Today, we're taking a look at arguably the most consequential elements of any one person's decisions, ones which could easily change the course of a game before it even begins. I'm Six Snipes with all things attachments, and this is Five Minutes in Sandstorm. This video does not cover any of the optics, as all of them have been broken down in the previous video linked here. Let's start with the cheapest and most effective item under the attachments category: tracers. They're free. Most people are under the misconception that tracers are for hip. Firing. This is incorrect. While yes, they can help with target acquisition when aiming down sight, the more useful trait is that being every fifth loaded round in a magazine is always a tracer, and the bottom five of every magazine are all tracers, meaning that when you see an influx of them, you're no, out no, of bullets, no, no, no. making them an invaluable asset for ammunition management. That being said, tracers don't always make sense. Firstly, they're always locked for use on machine guns to make it difficult to hide in the back of the map and camp with a suppressor and get away with it, but similarly, you wouldn't want to run down your Moza and line up a line lean right to your position. However, you got to clear a building with an M4 and want to know when you're going to be running dry, they are perfect. If you want a primary with lots of ammo variants, shotguns are for you. Flechette shells are exactly like the standard ammo you have, only with more penetration. It does not change pellet count, spread, and if it's better against armor or at range, the value is so low as inconsequential. Slugs, on the other hand, are exactly what you'd expect. One big bullet with a lot of better range and very consistent one-hit kills. The rarest ammo variant is AP ammo and AP tracer, both currently only existing in the selection for the well rod. For three credits, it basically does one shot less against heavy armor past a certain range, making it the, the best, best thing ever. ever. Use, Use the, the well rod, it's the, the best, best gun, gun, baby. Not all extended magazines are made equal. The value is very inconsistent, but the standard is a one credit cost mag that has five extra bullets in the bottom. This isn't a lot, but there are scenarios where five extra bullets would have saved the day, and with larger carriers, you're going to get more mags, ergo more bullets for that single credit. It's not the greatest thing ever, usually, but with a few guns like the MP7 and ASVAL, the more expensive but more necessary mags can add anything between 10 and 20 rounds for anything between 1 and 4 credits. If you're a gunner using the M240B or MG3, the extended box magazine literally doubles the belt size from 50 to 100 one-shot 308 AP rounds. If you aren't using this, you aren't doing your job. Quick reloading is an exclusive grip thing. The Mosin stripper clip and the MR73 speed loaders are both examples of very cheap utilities that speed up a round-by-round -round reload to a simultaneous refill on an empty gun. The greased bolt for bolt-action snipers will help expend ammo much faster given a far quicker cycling speed. It's basically a must-have because landing the follow-up to a miss can be difficult with a gun that isn't self-loading and it's also cheap as hell. The flash hider is the cheapest and arguably most essential element to any automatic weapons, and the go-to if you don't have the money for more expensive picks. Most people may opt for the more effective suppressor, but keep in mind that as long as you're at range, you may as well be invisible to the enemy with just the flash hider. I sat in this spot for near the entire match and literally ran out of ammo on my primary from killing so many ignorant snipers before they finally found me. It also greatly reduces the flash effect you yourself witness blooming in front of your optic. The suppressor does everything the flash hider does, but better, plus reducing the audio of a shot report, making it the most effective for close quarters concealment. Gunshots can be heard from any distance on any map unless they are suppressed. The fastest way to locate someone firing a suppressor is the pronounced gas cloud escaping from their muzzle. Bruh. It won't be as obvious as a bright flash, but it's still very visible and noticeable from even longer ranges if you know what you're looking for. And compensators reduce recoil horizontally while foregrips do so vertically. I always go for the foregrip first because most most guns skew far more upward than laterally in terms of recoil, and while both coming in at 3 credits on primaries each can be expensive on some guns, you do get what you pay for and together they're capable of turning lower caliber weapons like the M4 into an absolute laser beam. It is still economically more viable to learn a weapon's recoil than to spend money on recoil management items. Don't guffaw the other grips. The quick draw grip can be effective paired with grenades, letting you get your weapon back with your hands faster and follow up the flashbang you just threw and is only one credit to boot. Bring it if you're going to be using a lot of ordnance. The reload grip doesn't make the process that much faster, but that little sliver of space can pretty easily be the difference between countering a push or making an advance faster. It's also noteworthy that the reload time saved is percentage based, meaning weapons like shotguns with far longer reloads have more to benefit from. Between the equally priced recoil and aiming grip, the latter is steadily becoming my favorite. Being able to scope quicker vastly improves target acquisition and is especially potent for snipers when every moment counts towards preventing enemies from getting away who may be about to escape after you shoot their friend. It also changes your posture to that sexy, sexy C clamp. The bipod both steadies aim and reduces recoil more than any other attachment in the game, but everyone's gonna call you a camper for using it. Lasers are unnecessary for anything with a spray and pray tag attached to it, but if you've the need to operate guns like an MG or a sniper with slow ADS speeds and closer engagements, it's far more convenient to use a laser, and you get far more value out of it with things like shotguns, which rely much more on landing the first shot accurately and therefore having a general awareness of exactly where your muzzle is pointing at 
any given time. You should not have to pay to flip up the iron sight on your MP7. You should not have to pay for marginally better iron sights on your M16. You should not have to pay to remove the forward post on your M4. If your ass is using a 3-point recoil grip instead of a 3-point grenade launcher, you are why your team loses. Oh no!